I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. I have two special guests with me this week. Um, Mr. Annabelle Lopez, who was the uh, WBBG Mr. America winner. And uh, we also have Bill Nylon, who is a judge and a competitor in the Florida area. And both Annabelle and Bill and a bunch of other people got together last weekend to uh, meet with Chris Dickerson out in Fort Lauderdale. Chris is in a nursing home out there. And... Uh, Annabelle organized a trip to go out there, and so I thought I'd have him on the show to talk about it. Welcome to the show, guys. Great to see you, John. All right. Well, Annabelle, let's, let's start with you because you're the one who organized this trip. Um, you got a bunch of guys to uh, go out to visit Chris in the nursing home. So before we, before we talk about the, your trip, though, let's uh, bring our listeners up to date on what happened with Chris about a year ago, right? A year ago, Chris was brought into the nursing home. That's correct. Yeah. So he, what happened, Annabelle? He fell down. He did he break his hip, and then when he got to the to the hospital, uh, he had a heart attack there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chris has been having different issues, and uh, Bill Bill Nilan, you know, he's pretty much update of what happened to him. I believe that he fell, right, Bill? Yes, um, he fell and broke his hip. And broke his hip. Yeah. So then what, what happened, Bill, when they brought him to the hospital? Then uh, Chris had more complications? Yeah, they went to do major surgery, a hip replacement surgery, and Chris suffered a major heart attack while under anesthesia. Wow. Okay. So uh, he was on a ventilator for 17 days. Chris also caught COVID while he was there at the rehab center. So it was real touch and go for a while, and they were worried about brain damage because he was on their ventilator so long. Okay. And from what I understood, when they tried to pull him off the ventilator, he really panicked, which, and the brain didn't want the, didn't want to let go of that artificial breathing. And that's why they were worried about brain damage because uh -huh. he didn't, didn't, initially he didn't breathe on his own when okay. they tried to take him off the ventilator. So it was pretty scary, but he did make a full recovery. Did they have to put him on the ventilator because of the COVID or was it because of the heart attack? I think the heart attack. And okay. then later on, subsequently, he got COVID. I think his resistance was so down yeah, that right, he yeah. was so susceptible, he caught COVID. Yes. Okay. But the mm -hmm. ventilator was a result of the heart attack. Okay. That's yeah, a lot of uh, elderly people caught COVID in those nursing homes, right? That was like a big, big place to catch it, you know? Yes, they did, yeah. How did, did Chris yes. recover okay from the COVID? What, did, he, did he get back from that okay? He did. Back from COVID, he did, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it left him too weak to do any, any physical therapy or rehab on his hip. He was oh, too weak. Okay. So then they decided to just keep him in the nursing home, right? Because he, he wouldn't have been able to take care of himself because Chris lives by himself. Right, right. He needed round-the-clock care. Okay, gotcha. Now, now, what's the prognosis for Chris? Are they going to let him out of the nursing home eventually? Or, or do you think it'll... They'll have to stay in there. We really don't. We really don't know uh, what's going to happen with Chris yet. But uh, from this visit, the day of this visit, he uh, he had recovered pretty good. He was in, he looked very very uh, alert and uh, and looked good. Uh, right, Bill? Yeah. Yes, he did the best I'd seen him. He looked robust and pretty healthy. Yes. Okay. So who did you get to go up to visit him, Annabelle? You, you've got a bunch of people to go up there. Well, I, I probably could have gotten a, a full house if I would have, you know, promoted, you know. Yeah. Uh, if I would have promoted this, I, I would have gone crazy because I know how people love Chris and uh, yeah. uh, people are always writing to me and asking me how he's doing, asking him for the address and uh one thing that I uh, that Chris told me one time when at the beginning of this situation was that he didn't want to you know publicize anything and uh, uh, that's why I didn't I never wrote anything about it you know but uh, 
I uh, I went ahead and uh, I I did listen to him, but this time I decided to to uh, after my last visit before this one, I was uh, I, I was only uh, able to speak to him through the window of his room. You know they didn't allow us to go in, okay. and uh, I, I believe Bill had to do the same thing, and. Uh, after that time, I, I was very concerned about Chris. He really didn't look good. He was not responding like himself. He was uh, laying on a bed, uh, won't get up. And uh, so that concerned me a lot. And I saw him very, very down, you know. And I, I even asked him if I could take a picture of him, you know, laying on the bed and, and then waving at the people. And he did it. He did it. And, uh, I kind of sensed that he he needed to, to to assurance, you know, that he's not forgotten. And uh, because I told him, I said, "Look, a lot of people are asking me about you. They're writing to me, and uh, I'd like to get your permission, you know, to publish this picture, which I did not publish. I didn't want to show him in, in, a, in a you know laying on a bed there, all cover up, you know. Mm -hmm. So after that day, I I gave it some thought. And uh, I spoke with uh, uh, Bill Nillon since he's, you know, he's the closest one to him and the one that's has the, uh, he's able to get to him in no time at all. And I discussed with him the idea of putting a group together, uh, thinking that if I was able to get the right people there, uh, it will help him a lot. I did not discuss this with Chris. We surprised him with this visit. And... Uh, I, I invited, let's see, who was there? Uh, you could help me along, by, Bill. Uh, sure. Andy this, this Bustinto mm -hmm. was there. Yeah, uh, uh, Adolfo Andy, Andy, was, Andy and his wife. Right. Andy, Andy Bustinto and his wife. Adolfo. Right. Peter Adolfo Potter. Robert. Yeah. Peter yeah. Potter. Mm -hmm. Right. And your wife and mother-in-law and myself. Okay. That's correct. I, I uh, the reason I did this, uh, John, is because I just didn't want to get the wrong people there and uh, and make a mess out of it. Besides, I was cons uh, the the nursing home told me that I could, you know about keeping the the group limited to oh. who's gonna be there, and I wanted to kind of obey that. But my my whole purpose of this meeting uh, with Chris and surprising him was to look for a way to, you know, build up his spirit. And I think we did that, right, Bill? He was really very yes, responsive. Very he, he connected with us. He, you know, he interacted in the conversation and answered the questions. And we had, we had fun, I have to say, we had fun. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw the video that you put on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I was surprised. Chris was very, very with it. He didn't seem like he was, you know, like, no. Or, or decrepit or anything like that. I mean, he, he seemed like a himself, you know? Yes, yes. He was cracking um, jokes. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, you know. And, you know, we discussed that. Uh, we, we talked a little bit our past, you know, when I was training with him and the things I learned from him. But yeah. what I what, what I, I really liked what the, what the nursing home did, we met outside, and when we walked in, he, his back was towards, towards us. I think he was only expecting me to be there. Because mm -hmm. they told him that, you know, that I wasn't want, I was going to be the one. And uh, when he turned around and he saw all these people walking there, he was like really surprised, right, Bill? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, yeah. So he, that's he like felt the greatest good. greatest thing we could do for him, Annabelle. That was the greatest thing you could do for him. Yeah. To lift yeah. his spirits, you know? Yeah, I was. I, I kind of thought about it. I meditated about it. I said, "Wow, I think I, I'm going to do this." Um, there's, you know, we have a problem uh, nowadays that people want to celebrate you after you pass away. You know, <laughs> I said, "I don't want to." You know, hey, there's a song that says, "Love, love me and give me what you're going to give me while I'm alive." Right. Exactly. <laughs> <I agree. laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I I think it worked out really good. I'm glad I did it. I came back with a good feeling, and I think everybody else did too. Yeah. And at the same time, it was good to see, you know, 
the other people there that I have not seen for years and years, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Now, now, in addition to you guys, you also had some letters that you brought with, right? From people who wrote letters to them? Yes. Yes. I contacted uh, Lee Haney, uh, Boya Co., uh, Richard Baldwin. Richard Baldwin. Yes. He wanted to come over, but, you know, at the last minute, he had a family situation that he had to take care of. Okay. And uh, he gave he sent me a letter and uh, another friend of his from India sent me letters. And he was really surprised with those letters uh, as I read them. So, and, uh, it, you know, all this came together because these are people that he knows and they, they, they send them great letters. You know, they were very, very well put together. And he, he felt very touched. And uh, a lot of time, you know, he became emotional, you know. Sure. And I had, those, I had those parts on video, but I didn't want to show him like that, you know, all yeah. broken down, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know so that was, that was more personal there, and I didn't want the whole world watching that, you know. Okay. And, Bill, you, you, me and you were just talking before we started the interview about Boyer and Chris, how far they go back, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. Boyer Boyer Cole mentioned that in the letter that he sent him, you know? Yes. Yeah. I said that uh, Boyer mentioned to Chris in the letter that he remembered the night they met, and it was when Boyer won the Teenage Mr. America in 1966. Chris was there, and Boyer wanted to meet Chris, and that's when they met. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, any, anybody who knows Boyer. They became great friends after that for years and they went back and forth i think i looked it up and i think chris beat boyer 11 times and i think boyer beat chris six or seven times wow <laughs> yeah yeah he, he wrote, uh, wrote a liberalized letter I, I could read it to you if you want I mean, yeah, yeah. Interesting. yeah yeah uh boyer Cole says to chris chris you and i go back a long way i recall for uh I recall first meeting you way back in 1966, right after the teenage Mr. America that I was in. You were with our good friend, Dennis and Joe Abenda, and I believe Dick Chattel was there as well. Dick Chattel was a fellow that, I don't know if you know of him, uh, John, he used to you know, come around with us and he judged a few times, but he was more of a follower of the sport and he was a very nice person. Okay. So anyway, the letter, uh, he says, many great times enjoying your friendship and all the comp competition we were in. We both became lifelong friends with Bill Pearl and, of course, Cliff Swan, one of the best physique photographers ever. Chris, I wish I could be there in person with all the other great guys who are getting together to honor you. It has always been a pleasure to call you, my friend, and I wish you the very best. God bless you for your call. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to say the same thing as you, Bill. I mean, if anybody who knows bodybuilding, if you go back over history, you can go back to the 60s when these guys were amateurs and they were competing against yeah. Yeah. men. And I think, I think Boyer was ahead of them. But then when Chris turned pro, and even in NABA, remember they were going to NABA together and they were competing over there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's both of them. And then they became yeah. They're on the stage together. Yeah, they're on the stage together. Yeah. When, when Boyer won the professional, Chris won the amateur. Right. 73. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris and I, you know, we go way back before we, you know, we start, you know, before I started competing, you know, and, and Chris as well, you know, he had not won any big titles and we were, when we were, you know, training together and he helped, he helped me. I owe Chris a lot. Yeah. You know, he, he got me, my, he got my first picture in the magazine he wrote the first article introducing me in, in the magazines. And uh, we, you know, Chris became more like part of my family. You know, my, my mother, my, my father, my brothers and sister, they all knew Chris well because he used to come over the house a lot at the times wow. that we were training together. And he became part of our family. Yeah. So I have always had a very close relationship with him. And uh, after all these things that happened to him, I, you know, I, I I just don't forget. I don't forget people that do things for me and help me out. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna forget Bill for helping me out with this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and about, he, so he yeah. Chris started 
helped you get training, help you started training when you were. You oh, yeah. Training, right? Yeah. Yeah. We trained together. And uh, the posing that I know, I owe, it to, I owe it to Chris. He taught me how to pose. And uh, it's funny that, that, you know, the day of the meeting, we were talking about it. And, you know, what, what he always told me, advice about, about posing, uh, when, what to do, what not to do. And I carry it, I carry it through, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we got a kick out of that, the right, Bill, because I said that nowadays the guys, they post too much, you know. And Chris always said to me, when you are competing, you, the more you pose, the more you show your weaknesses. <laughs> I always remember that. He said, you should not, do, you know, for, for competition, for prejudging, for judging, you should not do more than 10 poses. Mm. And uh, I never forgot about that. You know, and I, I, I think it's, 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 the, it's correct because I see guys nowadays, you know, I don't go to contests much, but uh, the times that I've been, you can't, you can't do that. You know, you can't continue to post. We used to take pictures of ourselves and then out of those pictures, I will make my posing routine because uh -huh. that's the way he learned. He learned that from Bill Pearl, so he used to pass it on to me. Mm. So you, you look at the pictures and see which ones you look the best in. And say, okay, yeah. well, we all, yeah, we all have favorite poses. And I think that from all the pictures that we take, the one that, you know, uh, displays our physique the best, those are the ones you incorporate into the prejudging or, 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 or the selection of uh, uh, body parts and things like that. But uh, now, if you're doing a posing exhibition, then that's a different situation. You could do whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did, did Chris work with you a lot on the transitions and stuff? Because he was such a great poser for his time. He, uh, on, on what? On the transitions between the poses. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Used, to, we used to spend an hour to uh, sometimes two hours posing. Yeah, every day. Yeah. And the, and the posing was, was harder than the training. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, posing is great because, it, it, you know, all the tensing and all that, Help help you, you know, bring out your definition as well. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. But the secret behind the posing is that the more you practice, you gotta have it in your mind. There's nothing worse than standing in front of an audience and not knowing what you're gonna do next. Right. You should <laughs> flow through your poses, one pose to the other, you know. Right, right. <laughs> now, Bill, you've known uh, Chris a real long time. Uh, you're you're one of his closest friends. How did you guys ever meet? How did that all start? Um. I, I, in fact, I told that story at well, we were at the meeting. I was at the 2003 Nationals with my friend Mike Brooks, and um, we didn't realize we thought the morning tickets were good for the night show, also, but they were not. So I told Mike, wait here that evening, and I'd go get the tickets at the box office. And there were that, that lobby there at the Jackie Gleason Theater was so packed, so crowded that coming back to where Mike was, I actually had to walk sideways because there were so many people. Right. And I'm coming, walking sideways, and a guy's trying to pass me, and I look directly into the eyes of Chris Dickerson. Now you got to remember, John, this guy all my life was just images in the magazine. Right. I never saw, I saw videos of Chris, but I had hardly heard his voice. I never saw him really move. He, the man is standing in front of me. So I stopped right where I was, and I stopped him, and I said, I said, you're Chris Dickerson. And he looked at me and he agreed. <laughs> and then I proceeded to tell him more about himself than he knew. And I said to him, I know something about you that very few people know. And he's blinking at me. And I said, when you were 16, your vocal coach told you you needed to lift weights to increase your lung capacity and your rib cage for your opera singing. Wow. And Chris looked at me and he backed his head up and said, how do you know that? I said, because, Chris, <laughs> it was in an Ebony magazine. In 1970, and I bought that Ebony magazine. And Chris yeah. looked at me and said, that was 33 years ago. I said, yes, Chris, that's the kind of impact you had on me. When I saw Chris in the magazines, I stopped turning the pages. Because yeah. I couldn't relate to Dave Draper or Arnold. Or, they were too big, but Chris was about my height. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, you know, maybe, maybe if I really train my butt off for 10 years, I can approach something like that, yeah. you know? And, yeah. very, and I had pictures of him and Boyer and Frank Zane on my wall in high school. And my parents would just, you know, 1970, you know, 69. My parents would come in my bedroom and, you know, 
What's with our son and these half-naked men on the walls? Why not a football player? Why not a baseball player, son? I said, because I want to be like that, Mom. I want to look like that. And they just shook their heads, you know. They couldn't understand why their son wanted to oil up his body and shave the hair off his legs and do this crazy, vain thing. (laughs) But, you know, we, as you know, John and Annabelle, we'd buy magazines. And Annabelle was in the magazines, Muscular Development, Strength and Health, MTI, and um, we'd get these magazines and read about these stars and what they were doing and how they were doing it. And we'd follow their routines and we'd read the articles. And you may remember way before the Internet or any of those things, we had to wait till the issues came out to find out who won the Mr. America, yeah. who yeah. won the Mr. Universe. And it would be months later, right. months yeah. later before we could find out. Right. But we, we lived for those magazines when they would come to the newsstand. Right. But again, they were images. You never dreamed of meeting them. You know, meeting Chris Dickerson in the 70s is like meeting Bob Hope. You're yeah. not going to meet him. He's in California. You're not going to meet Frank Zane. Right. But now these guys are successful. Well, flash four, four years, and I'm at this Judge and Peter Potter Southern States. Well, I said to Chris at, in 2003, I said, Chris, if you're ever in Florida again, I said, please, I have a personal training facility. I'd love to show it to you. Come by, and I'd love to please contact me. I gave him my business card. Well, four years later, I'm judging the southern states, and during the right before intermission, I turn around, and sitting in the VIPs, in the front row right behind me is Chris Dickerson. Mm-hmm. And I turned around, it's four years later, I said, Chris, I'm sure you don't remember me, but I met you four years ago at the Nationals in Miami. He pointed at me, he said, I remember you, Ebony Magazine. I said, right, right, Chris. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, can I take you to lunch? And the next Saturday, we went to lunch, and we developed a tremendous friendship from then on. Yeah, that's awesome. That was it, yeah. And you guys stayed really yeah. – you've been really close to him all these years, right? Yes, at that time, Chris, you know, he had several surgeries, his knees, his back, he had a shoulder surgery, and he really was kind of out of the, out of the circuit and out of the loop, you know? And I said, geez, we've got this legend right here in South Florida. Yeah. And um, I remember – in, in February of 2008, well, before that, we, I tried to re- help Chris revive his career. And Annabelle, you'll remember this, when Chris had a seminar at Powerhouse Gym in West Palm Beach in January of 2008. Yeah. We put on a right. seminar. Chris put on a terrific seminar. And then the next month in February of, of 2008, um, that was Black History Month. And that particular year, they were celebrating Black Firsts. And I contacted Tanya Knight, who's the news anchor here in West Palm Beach. I said, you know, you've got a treasure right here in South Florida. Chris Dickerson is the first African-American, the first black man to win the Mr. America title. He Mm -hmm. broke the color barrier in bodybuilding. And we've got him right here in Florida. Not only that, he's a full-time Mr. Universe, the oldest man to win the Mr. Olympia, and he's right here. She said, do you think he'd be willing to go on the news? I said, I I think I could talk him into it. (laughs) I think so. And Chris went on the 11 o'clock news, and he was great. He's a great public speaker yeah. with such a resonant yeah. voice, and he was terrific. And he gave a great account of himself and about, you know, taking charge of opportunity, and he was just really great. And from there, I got him honored at several shows, John Schleicher's show in Tampa and uh, Peter Potter's show, Frank Dalto, and I – you know, was kind of making the rounds with Chris as a guest of honor. And a lot of people go to those shows then, John. When Chris won the Mr. Olympia, they were five years old. Yeah. You know, so I got a clip from YouTube of the top six of the 82 Olympia with Chris's routine on it and him getting awarded the Mr. Olympia. So I would show that, and then I would do like a two-minute introduction to about Chris Dickerson and who he is and what he's done. And a lot of people don't know this about Chris. Chris was really the first personal trainer at Gold's Gym, Venice. He had a loft upstairs in the 80s. And really? he was a personal trainer at Gold's way before anybody was really doing that, way before Charles Glass or any of those guys. Chris yeah. was doing a personal training at Gold's. Right, Annabelle? I know you remember that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing personal training at Gold's not long after he won the Mr. America. And all through the 80s. You know, most people don't realize he won a lot of couples championships, too. Yeah, I remember that. Mixed pairs. Yeah, Yeah. he sure did. Mm -hmm. He had a 30-year career. Yeah, yeah, which you don't see anymore in in today's bodybuilders, right? No, Boyer Boyer had a 30-year career. I mean, there were lapses in there, 
but right. totally they competed 30 years. I know. They started in the 60s, and they weren't done until the 90s. That's, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, both of them finished, I think, at the, at the Masters Olympia. Yeah. 94. Yeah. Yeah, that, that golden era of well, yeah. really something else. There you have it, John. Anything you want to know about us, you could ask, you could, you could ask him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Did, did Bill Pearl get a chance to write a letter, Annabelle? He wrote. Uh, he also wrote a letter. Yes, him and uh, his wife Judy. Uh, I spoke to them on the phone, both of them, and uh, she she mainly does, you know, most of his uh, presentations and answering, you know, and all that. And uh, yeah, he wrote a really nice letter too. So it was nice, you know. Lee Haney wrote a letter as well. So yeah, yeah, it was nice. You know, I think. Uh, Chris was very happy about that, and uh, and I'm very excited about that. I was able to do this for him because he deserves that and more. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, Annabelle, I think it touched Chris to get such respect from men of the, that caliber to show their yep. respect and love for Chris, men of that caliber yep. and, and achievement in the sport who tipped yep. their hat to Chris. I remember when Chris and I were at the 2010 Mr. Olympia, it was a 45th anniversary, and I got to go as Chris Guest. And we were at the expo in the morning, and um, we found Lee Haney, and Lee Haney grabs Chris around the shoulder, and he looks at me, and he points at Chris. He goes, now, this is a real champion. Wow. That's what Lee Haney said <laughs> about Chris Dickerson. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. yeah, well, I'll tell you, Lee, Lee Haney, I... Lee Haney and I, we have, we have actually never met in person, but we know, we know each other. And he writes letters to me. And uh, what I admire mo most about Lee is how respectful he is, how well-mannered he is. Yes. You know? yeah. And coming from a person like that to call me sir and call me Mr. Lopez, I, I keep telling him, I said, when, when are you going to stop that? <laughs> call him, call him <laughs> sir. <laughs> He says, no, no, you deserve that, you know. But, uh, yeah, he, he is a real gentleman. He's a wonderful person. Yeah. Yeah, those guys who have a lot of class, they, they recognize past champions, you know, and they, they'll never forget them, and they always give them a certain reverence. Um, yeah. I remember when Lee competed against Sergio Oliva in the 1984 Mr. Olympia, and I interviewed Lee, and I said, what does it feel like to beat Sergio Oliva? He said, well, I didn't beat Sergio Oliva. He goes, Sergio Oliva was there giving an appearance. He was giving a, a, an exhibition. He goes, I was just honored to stand on stage with him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's, you know, that's him. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something before I forget. I want to thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Oh, you're welcome. Because you, you have also done a lot for bodybuilding. And all these things that you do, you know, mean a lot to us, you know, and inviting me to be part of, you know, your program. I want to thank you for that. And I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Annabelle. You deserve it. You deserve to be on here. Well, Annabelle, I, I think that was great that you did that uh, for Chris, you know, because like you said, a lot of people don't celebrate their lives while they're here. They wait till they pass away. That's and right. I'm, sh I'm sure it meant a lot to Chris because... You know, as, as much as Chris has done in his life and all he's accomplished, when you get older and you're by yourself, especially when you're in a nursing home, I mean, you it's got to bring you down. You know, it's, you got to feel really bad. And yes, yes. to get a visit from all his friends and to get these letters yeah. from these champions. I mean, at least it reminded him, not that he didn't know that, but it reminded him how well thought of he is and, and what a real champion he is and how we all yes. are. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. And let me tell you, I, uh, when I do things like this, I think about myself. And I say, I say how, how would I feel if somebody did something like that for me if I wasn't right. that situation? Right. You know, and, and uh, I make sure that what I do and say, it, it does stop, it helps that person. It's not about me. You know, this is about Chris, you know, and uh, I know that when I air that, uh, that meeting and that video, I was going to get bombarded. <laughs> I, I've been getting bombarded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like people from all over the world. Yeah. Puerto Rico from all over writing, yeah. you know. 
I know people try to praise me, and, th- and I, I know you uh, people are grateful, but it's not about me. It's about Chris. Right. It's about Chris. Right. Yeah. Well, I, w- I was really impressed with how he looked. He, he was very well spoken, and I mean, he could yes. be very, yep. very articulate, you know, so he looked like he was in really good spirits. Yes. He, he had a lot. He had fun. He answered questions. He said his jokes, you know, and uh, that was more like Chris that day. Yeah. I, I was not sure. I was not sure who I was going to see. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when he's not feeling well, I said, I just might go there with all these people. and he, I, He'll decide not to get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. Because, right. the, you know, the, the nurses, the nurses there, when I spoke to them, they told me, I said, he has days that nobody makes him get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I said, well, I'm going to take a chance on this, you know, and, mm-hmm. and see. Uh, and hopefully everything will go well. And yeah. thanks God it did. It was yeah. it, it was successful. Yeah. And Bill, how, yeah. how old did you say Chris is going to be this year? I, I, I didn't hear you again. I'm sorry. What was that? I, I was asking Bill, how old, how old is uh, Chris going to be this year in August? He's going to be uh, w- uh, Chris' birthday and mine are in the same month. Oh, okay. August. And years back when we were together, every year we used to celebrate our birthdays together. Mm-hmm. And have pictures of like that, and we always we always celebrated the, the birthday at, at my home. So okay. he, so Chris is about four years older than me. I can't remember the exact date. I know that my birthday is uh, August twenty four, and he's just a few days later. Okay. But uh, I'm gonna you know check my my calendar and find out for sure. And uh, I will post this birthday too. So, <laughs> so you know, uh, I will, I'll be speaking to him hopefully over the weekend. And it, it's very difficult to speak with Chris over the phone. Mm-hmm. Very difficult. Uh, when I call him, he's got difficulties hearing. And uh, every time I call him, for some reason, we cannot we cannot hold a full conversation. Okay. Yeah. And he, he gets frustrated because, uh, you know, I'm speaking to him and he can't hear me. You yeah. know, sometimes he hears what I say, sometimes he doesn't. And I hear him very well. Yeah. Oh, what, what, uh, Bill, what do, you think the, uh, what do you think the problem is when you call him on the phone? Well, sometimes he doesn't have the phone near him. And it is like you were saying, Annabelle, sometimes it's very frustrating. I was calling Chris like three, four times a week and I might get through once. Mm, that's Sometimes me too. He just Same with answer me. the phone, and he tells me the phone is far from him. But you know, if he kept, it, I mean, you know, whenever you're hospitalized, all you want is a phone call, you know, yeah. to yeah. pass the days. And and you know, I said, well, Chris, you know, keep it by your side. Or he says it's hard to get to, it's hard to reach. I said, well, you know, get one of the nurses to help you, you know. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, it was that frustrating because you couldn't you couldn't talk to him very often. Yeah. Well, the, the last visit that I had before this meeting that I went to see him, uh, I asked him, I asked him, what's the problem with the phone when I when I call you and we can we can have a conversation? He he has the phone. The phone is hooked up to his left side. So right. He has right. Problems yep. reaching. He has to reach with his with his right arm to get the phone across his body. And I saw him trying to do that. And he, and he was having difficulties t- picking up that phone mm-hmm. and holding on to it, you know. So I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is hearing or what the situation is with that. But it's like you said, I, I, I out of three or four times that I call him, I may be able to speak with him a little bit, you know, w- once. Yeah, yeah. Annabelle, do you think you're going to plan another trip up there with uh, with some of his friends again? Okay, uh, a lot of people are asking me that now, <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking about that doing it again. I uh, I will have to speak to the to the nursing home again, okay. and see if I could arrange something and get a, a, a nice group because I know I know that you want to go. I know that Richard Baldwin wants to go. Yeah, and. Uh, and a, and a lot of other guys, bodybuilders, you know. Uh, this was a short notice thing. 
I did this like in, from one week, you know, in, in two weeks notice, you know, mm -hmm. which is not a lot. But if I, I'm sure that if I let Lee Haney know sometime, you know, Lee Haney is in Georgia, right? Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I, I let, I, I'll let Boyer Co. know on time. We might be able to, what I would like to do is the following, up, uh, Bill, and since you brought it up, is to get a good group of you guys together, you know, uh, you and all these past people that competed with Chris, and maybe have a get-together out here. Yeah, that'd be great. Have them you know, travel out here to Florida and yeah. probably spend, you know, uh, a, 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 a good day together, you know. Yeah, and, that'd be awesome. And, try to, and then I'm, what I'm going to try to do is to see if we could get Chris out mm, okay. to join us outside. Yeah. Hopefully by then, by then, you know, this COVID thing is dying out now, so we might be able to yeah. get away with doing that. But yeah. let me work on that and see if wow. we could put something together like that. This yeah. way, people who are traveling a distance from uh, out of Florida will make the trip worth a while out here. Yeah, yeah, maybe sometime. Have we'll a see you know, like have a dinner together and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah that'd be great. So I, I will keep you posted on that, and and uh, and uh, Bill also, so we could put this together. What do you think, Bill? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, that yeah. would be terrific. Yeah, have a big so outing. I'm gonna, you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna start working on that and give it a lot of time and give people time to prepare for it. Yeah, yeah. Then we we need to find a place where we could get together. Then I, uh, at the same time, I will speak to the nursing home. Uh, then uh, I know the, the I know a lady there that uh, one of the attendants uh, was she was the one that helped me put this together okay. uh, to see if, if it would be possible to take Chris out for a, and spend a day with with us that we don't have to stay in the nursing home. Yeah, yeah. That'd be you, you know, Annabelle, there's a restaurant right near there that Chris and I used to go to quite often called Peter Pan Restaurant, and it's less than a mile from there. And really? I know they could accommodate us. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Okay, I'll be contacting you about that as I begin to work on that idea, okay? Because okay. I think it's got to be somewhere close to the center, you know? And this place yeah. is a mile away. And it's yeah, got plenty okay. of rooms. Big restaurant. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Sounds, sounds good to me. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you for joining me on the show. I, I really wanted to find out how this meeting went with Chris. I was sorry I couldn't make it, Annabelle, but thanks for inviting me. Uh, like you said, it was just kind of short notice for me getting off work. But uh, I'm glad you guys had a great experience uh, going out there and meeting with Chris. And uh, hopefully we can do it all again. Because like you said, Adam, Absolutely. it's important to celebrate yes, the guy, you know, a great champion that he was and uh, let him know that he's still loved and, uh, and missed by the bodybuilding community. So we got to give him his support while he's still here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank, right. thank you, Bill. And, uh, thank you, John, for, for this uh, opportunity. And uh, I know Chris will, you know, will be very happy to know all this. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, Bill. All right. Take care. Uh, Thank you. Very much for joining me. And I appreciate you guys coming on the show. And uh, we'll, I'd love to have you guys back on the show again, because you guys both got a lot of bodybuilding knowledge and history behind you. Uh, Thanks for having us, John. It's a real pleasure. Absolutely. Pleasure to talk to both of you guys. Great to see you, you, John. All right. Great to see you, too, Bill. Take care. Take Adam. care. All right. See you guys. Okay.